Bible Radio Show with Dr. V from Florence, South Carolina and the Divine Church of Deliverance. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Positive Power with Robert Zach Christian Media and Spreaker Podcast. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show with your favorite Bible radio host, Dr. V, better known as Dr. Virginia Singleton, Senior Pastor of the Divine Church of Deliverance, located at 550 Lawson Street in Florence, South Carolina. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank God tonight for an opportunity to be back with you tonight on our first broadcast of the Radio Bible Show in the new year of 2022. Yes, it's been a while, but God has seen fit that we will be back on tonight. Yes, Dr. V is speaking a little slow. Tonight, she's trying to recover from a cold, hallelujah, but pray her strength in the Lord tonight. But by God's grace and his mercy, we are here on tonight. And we thank God for all of you. And we pray that all of your holidays have been blessed in the Lord. We want to say hello to Jerry Ross out there in Ross Radio Land. We thank God for you, Jerry Ross, and being back on the platform once again. But you all know how we do it. We always want to give honor and glory to the one who makes it possible for us to come before you on Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We know who he is. His name is Jesus the Christ. Let us stop for a moment. And let him give him honor by way of prayer. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you. Father God, we thank you once again for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father God, because it's nobody but you who have made it possible for us to once again gather together on social media all over this world. Oh, God, that you will give us a word from you. Father God, we thank you that throughout the holiday season, you have been with us. You have blessed us. You have blessed our family. And Father God, you have richly and abundantly poured into us. And Father God, but most of all, we thank tonight that you shall continuously pour the word into our hearts. Father God, we pray that you continue to bless Jerrod's live worldwide Positive Power 21, and every platform that is served and engineered by Jerry Ross. We thank you, oh God, that even throughout 2022, every platform be even more blessed by the powering and engineering of his doing. Father God, tonight we pray that you bless this thy servant. Strengthen us, oh God. Give us better health and better strength that we might better serve you, O oh God, and yield our vessel unto you to be used by you. We thank you now in the name of the Father. We thank you in the name of the Son. And we thank you, Father God, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Bless the ears of the hearers, O oh God, that we all may be strengthened thereby. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. And let everybody on the line say amen, amen, and Amen. Again, we say welcome back to the Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show. You listen to your favorite Bible radio host, none other than Dr. V. We ask you to do but one thing. Hit those share buttons and invite others to this show on tonight that they too might be blessed by this word. By permission of the Holy Spirit, on tonight, we are being led to um, Genesis um, chapter 1. Um, of course, we're going to be using 
different um, passages of scripture to support our text on tonight, but our foundation passages will come from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, and they read, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Our topic for Bible discussion on tonight is God's expectations of family. God's expectations of family. You know, we as people, as human beings, God has allowed us to born into different families. We have the power of choice to choose many things. But one thing that we did not have the power of choice over was what family we were born into. That was a choice that God made for himself. And now that God has placed us respectively into individual families, there are expectations and standards that God has set that we as human beings that we should do in our respective families. First of all, we must know that it was by divine counsel that mankind was created. When we look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, a divine trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, met when God decided he wanted a family. Hallelujah, Jesus. He wanted individuals that resembled him in image and likeness. All of the animals and all of the trees and all of the shrubbery, all the fish of the sea and, and every creeping thing on the earth and under the earth, everything else had already been created. But God, in his infinite wisdom, he saw that there was nothing that had his image or his likeness. Therefore, in the image of the Elohim, that's the plural God, which makes up the Trinity, the council held a joint meeting wherein there was unity and plurality. They were all on one accord. And the decision was made unanimously. There was nobody that was bickering. There was nobody that was out of order. There was no one in that Trinity family that was in disagreement on how to create mankind and create God's family. They decided to create male and female with expectations to meet the will of God for all mankind. So they decided not just to make a man. They decided not just to make a female. The council decided to make in the image and the likeness of unity and the plurality of the Trinity of the Godhead. We will make male and female to meet the expectations of family because man alone could not create family. Female alone could not create family. 
it would take both to make family. The first family that was created was Adam and Eve. Then they had Cain and Abel. They consisted of the first family. Then we know what happened in the first in that first family. Know that there are no perfect families. But remember what our topic talks about. God has expectations for every family. And if we operate within the confines of the expectations that God has set for every family, especially Christian families, to operate, there is nothing that should come up in any family that if we follow after the standards and order that God has established for families, that families should not be able to work out. But there was trouble even in the first family. We know that the trouble started with Adam and Eve. They was the first family. They consisted of two. Two can be a family. They were disobedient and they were selfish. So guess what? That was passed down to one of their children. Cain killed his own brother, Abel. Why? Because Abel presented an acceptable offering to God from his from the first name of his flock in faith. Hallelujah. And it was acceptable by God. Why? Because in the, at that time, it was required that a blood sacrifice needed to be made before the Lord. So when Abel came before God to make a sacrifice, from that first family, he made a sacrifice that was acceptable unto God. He gave God from the best that he had. But you know some of us, we ain't going to do that which is right. We'll give God anything and expect God to accept it. So here come Cain, who he, he inherited that selfish spirit from his mama. And his dad. Cain's offering was refused by God because his offering was of the wrong sacrifice. He made it in self will and unbelief. He acknowledged no guilt or nor did he have any faith in the blood sacrifice for atonement. We know the situation with Adam and Eve. They were disobedient unto their father God. God had already laid out the rules for the family. He said, out of every tree in the Garden of Eden, you can eat all. But only of the tree of knowledge, you cannot eat of that tree. But what did they do? The very one he told them not to eat of is the very one that they ate from. So automatically, they passed that spirit down to their son, Cain. He inherited that same selfish, disobedient spirit, and it caused problems in the family. You did not meet the expectation that God has for family. Again, Cain inherited that selfish spirit from his parents, for he went against the established standard of holiness for God's family. And out of his own self-will, he brought an offering to God that was not worthy of holiness. God, from the very beginning, established an expected standard of holiness, of family, which would honor God and solidify unity throughout family for all generations. God expects family to be patient. With each other. How do you back that up, Dr. V? When we look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 1, it says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not with doubt for disputation. Meaning, those who seem without strength or who are weak in their faith, when they are facing difficult trials, 
and tribulations. We have family members in our own individual families. They may not be growing in their spiritual maturity as quick as we desire for them to grow. And there may be some who may have been strong in strength, may have been strong in faith, but something may hit them in life and cause them to become weak in their faith. We are not to stop judging and condemning them, but we are to have patience with them and be long-suffering with them and pray for them that God will strengthen them again, bear them up in their weakness on every side, that they will regain that strength, regain that faith that they once had. Believe it or not, sometimes life can come along and things can happen and can just knock the breath right out of us. But God's expectation for family is for family to stick together, for family to hold one another up, and for family to be patient with one another. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, reminds us, saying, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 2 and 3, and verse 3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. See, this is how the Trinity, the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is how they do it. They are, they may be God in three persons, blessed Trinity. They are all in unity. They are unified. They are always in one accord. Even though they have their different actions that they do in the Trinity, they are all in unity. They never work against one another. They always support one another and undergird one another in whatever needs to be done. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We must use humility and patience within our family. No matter what happens, we are family. Family going to be family. We can never change that. Nothing can change that we are family. No matter if one pass away, that does, that does not mean we still are not family. Nothing can change the fact that family is family. We should always bear each other up throughout times of struggle. We should always show love. One thing about it, you can't force love onto anyone, but at least we can sincerely extend a helping hand. Know that sometimes when people are going through trials and tribulations, they don't even feel that they want to receive love. And that sometimes is the place where people might be at. But there again, we got to be able to exercise that patience with one another in family. And sometimes we hear that cliche say, you, we got to learn how to love people, love them till it hurts. Let me tell you, sometimes love will hurt. We have to love people sometimes so much that it hurt us. It hurts us deeply because we love them so much. When they don't reciprocate that love, we want to reach out to them so much in trying to help them. We want to help process them through whatever they're going through. We want to lift them up. We want to be there for them. We want to show them that we care for them but they constantly keep excluding us. They keep slapping us on the back of our head. And it may not necessarily be that they don't want the love. It may be that they're not in a place at that time to receive the love that we're trying to show. So we have to be willing to remain who we are in our respective place within the family. 
we might just be the one that God has chosen and placed within the family to be the one that he has strengthened, to be the one strong enough to be long-suffering, to show love in spite of, not because of. We have a lot of people, they show love because of. But you got to be willing. If you say that you are a true bone child of God, you just might be that one that God has raised up and placed in your respective family to be that strong one, to continue to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth where nobody else can show love to that one that seems to be unlovable, know that everybody deserves to be loved, even when it seems like they are unlovable. At least we can sincerely extend a helping hand because a God expects family to love one another. Colossians Chapter 3 and verse 13 tells us to put on forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye see. We got to learn how to forgive one another in family. We God was so good to us, He allowed us to come over out of twenty twenty one into a brand new year, twenty twenty two. Many of us say, Well, I'm gonna make my resolution on December the thirty first. We need to stop making resolution and just do what we say we're going to do. Stop saying I'm going to change and just be the change that we say that we're going to do. There's still so many standards that God allows to come into a brand new year and we brought over the same old hurt. We brought over the same old hate. We brought over the same old feelings. We brought over the same old grudges that we were carrying for one another in 2021. But God said, I gave you a brand new year to forbear one another and to forgive one another. He said, so now what you brought over from an old year into a new year, if any man had a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you you ought to do the same thing. He said, when you brought what you had in 2021 before me, asking me, God, please forgive me. Don't let me carry this over into 2021. Just like you brought it before me. He said, now listen, I expect for you to do the same thing. What you asked me to forgive you for, I ask you to forgive your fellow man, especially those of your own family. God expects that family members should be able to forgive each other. He tells us never to let the sun go down on our wrath. Why should we never let the sun go down and we go to bed and just so peacefully go to sleep as though we're not angry with anyone, that we didn't get upset with anybody in our family that day. We didn't try to make that thing right. And we know that we got angry with somebody or either they got mad with us and we're carrying anger in our hearts for somebody or they carry anger for us. But God said, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Let not you have sin." In your heart and the sun go down and you go to bed. You go to sleep. Why? Because he said, I'm coming like a thief in the night. No man knows the day nor the hour that the son of man shall appear. 
but he is coming, my dear sister and my brother. And that's the danger of us, especially in families. We lay down with our husbands and we lay down with our wives. We lay down even angry with our children. We upset with them that they didn't do something that we wanted them to do. Or our children lay down in the house with our parents or we lay down with our siblings and we are angry with one another and the sun go down on that anger and we didn't make it right. But death comes like a thief in the night and take one of our family members home. Or we get a call in the middle of the night. Brother John or Sister Sally or uh, uh, Uncle Jack or uh, Auntie Sue or uh, 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 Cousin Jane have gone home. And it just might be one that we let the sun go down on our wrath. And we did not take opportunity to ask for forgiveness on one another. But the Lord said, as I forgave you, you ought to also Forgive one another. But he knows that. For we know not rather we will wake up and have opportunity to repent or ask each other for forgiveness. He tells us at Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 says, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15 says, But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You know, so see, we go to God. When we have wronged somebody, and and and, and or either somebody has wronged us, and and we want God to forgive us of our sins, but we don't want to go and ask God to forgive others of their sins. You know, so this thing is a two-way street. We gotta be willing to forgive other people. See, we can't go and ask the Lord, Lord, please forgive me. But if somebody hurts you, you've got to be ready to forgive them also. Father, forgive them for what they have done to me. We can't walk around holding anger and hurt and hatred in our hearts for our fellow man, especially for our family members. And we walking around saying, I'm a child of God. That is not the mark of a Christian. We got, we got to keep our heart clean at all times. Now, if, 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 if Dr. V, if you come to Dr. V, because Dr. V hurts your feelings, and if you come to Dr. V and, and try to make that thing right, and if Dr. V don't want to accept it, your hands are clean. Because forgiving somebody is not for the one who offended you. Forgiveness is for you the one who was offended, so your heart can be clear with God. So the one that offended you, it don't let them off the hook to forgive them. The forgiveness, you forgive Dr. Z, so your heart can be clear, so your heart can be clean before God. But you can't walk around with anger in your heart for somebody and still go before God and say, I love the Lord. He hear my cry that I am a subo child of God. We got to stand before God with a pure heart. He said, if you forgive men when they sin against you, he said, then I'll forgive you when you sin against men. He said, but if you do not forgive them when they sin against you, I will not forgive you either when you sin. So this thing is a two-way street. And that's God's expectation, especially for family. And we wonder why 
so many families are divided. Oh, my God. It's because too many in families are walking in spirits of unforgiveness. If we could just come together right now in the beginning, it's just not January the 4th. We are only four days into a brand new year. God said how beautiful the family can be in 2022 if families can just come together and forgive one another. All broken hearted can be mended. Relationship can be put back together. But we have got to learn how to forgive one another. And as we move forward, Jesus also taught on the law of forgiveness <coughs> in Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, as he said unto us, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, he say rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So he's saying, if your brother sin against you, tell him. Don't just walk around mad with him. He may not, not even know that they offended you. They may not know. Many times they will know. They may have done it intentionally. But every time somebody offends you, it is not intentionally done to offend you. We have to tell people sometimes that we were offended by what? They say it about what they did. If we say that we love one another, then we are in a greater danger walking around with an offense against somebody. They may not even know that they offended us, and we walk around laughing and talking with them as if nothing was done, and they may not even know that what they said or what they did offended us. So it's on me to go and tell that one that was offended. It is up to me to go and tell them, you know, I was offended by what you said. I need to bring it to their attention. They may not have done it intentionally. So he said, rebuke him. Go tell him about your sin. And if that sister or that brother, if they repent, ask you to forgive them, when you bring it to their attention, to that the point, especially in families. Many families right now, from years and years and years, still walking around, angry at one another, and they don't even know why they're mad. People don't even know why you're mad with them. Because they did not intentionally say or do a thing. Yes, you might have been offended by what they say they're doing, but they don't know that they offended you. They don't know that their actions hurts you, but you're walking around holding it against them. Tell them that they offended you. Tell them that what they said hurts you. And the Lord said, once you rebuke him, once you tell them, if they repent, if they say, I'm sorry, I did not intentionally mean to do, I didn't mean to say it that way, that way it was not intended. But it would be the outcome that way. And the Bible says, if they repent, he says, forgive them. He said, if they trespass against you seven times in a day, and if seven times a day they come back to you and say, I repent, he said, you forgive them. Especially in family, we got to keep our heart clear. Oh, we know it's not an easy thing to do. No, and Dr. B understand. The spirit here, you all got to be out in the world. And I do that. They keep doing this over and over and over and over and over. The Lord knows that that's not an easy thing to do. But it takes the Holy Spirit to help us. We cannot do this thing in our flesh alone. 
we have a paraclete, the Holy Ghost, to help us do these things. Many times we cannot forgive people because we walk in our flesh and we do not allow the Holy Spirit to help us. That's why we have to call on the Holy Spirit. Even when we deal with our family members, God still expects us to forgive one another. That's why we must call on the Holy Spirit for our guidance. He's our comforter, our keeper, and our guide. And any time we need his help, all we got to do is ask him, rather than us walking around angry and walking in a spirit of unforgiveness, oh, we don't want to pass away walking in a spirit of unforgiveness when all we had to do was go to one another and say, I forgive you. Can you forgive me? That thing is a two-way street, my sisters and brothers. God expects us to speak the truth and be honest with one another. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 tells us, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Now that can apply to your neighbor, anybody you come in contact with, but guess what? Your first neighbor is your family. Those are your first neighbors. If you can't tell the truth to the people that live in your own house, how in the world can you expect to go out and speak truth and be honest with somebody else? The Bible says charity begins at home. Charity ain't nothing but love. God expects us to practice telling the truth. He expects us to practice being honest. He expects us to practice showing love to our first neighbor. And they are the ones that's in our own family. How in the world can we legitimately go outside our own and show love to other people out there in the street, tell the truth to others out there in the street, and, and, and be honest with other people out there in the street when we can't even do it in our own home? God said, I expect it to first take place in the family. You got to first show these things among them. A lie is never less hurtful than the truth. Some people say, well, I, I, I better not tell the truth because the truth will hurt them too bad. The Bible says that we should know the truth and the truth will make us free. A lie don't help nobody. A lie not hurt you. But let me tell you one thing. The truth Will said that the lie will hurt that the truth might hurt you, but the truth will set you free. When you tell me a lie, you got to keep on lying to me so you'll never have to tell me the truth. I'm going to say that again. If you lie to me to make me feel better, you got to keep on lying to me to keep on telling me the truth. But if you tell me the truth, let that truth sting me. Let that truth hurt me. But I'll tell you, that truth may hurt me, but eventually I'll get over that shame. I'll get over that hurt. But that truth is going to set me free. God expects us to be honest. God expects us to be truthful and lie not to one another. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9 tells us, Lie not one to another. Sin say ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, especially when it comes to respect the family, we know what Apostle Paul taught at Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. He said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, all things now become new. We not used to lie to one another and be about to say, well, it's just a little white lie, ain't no such thing. Lie ain't got no color. A lie is nothing but a lie. You see, if you be in Christ now, you're a new creature. You might used to think that it's better for me to tell them a lie than to tell them the truth and hurt them. No, you tell them the truth. 
that little pain not come, but once I get past the pain, I'll see that the truth was better for me to know it than to keep telling me a lie, and I will never get any better or never do the right thing because you kept telling me a lie, and I never came into the knowledge of the truth. Glory be unto God. God expects family to comfort each other when facing trials and tribulations. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 tells us, Bear ye one another burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You see, God expects family to show sympathy, mercy, and love to broken family members. And not browbeat them when they are already wounded and fallen. It's a sad day in the neighborhood when we have family members who's already wounded and already broken hearted and already broken down, whether it's from situations or whether they might be going through illnesses and terminal illnesses or whatever the case might be. And rather than offer them some kind of comfort, we just dig and just dig it. Just like, oh, we treat our family member like a sore. We know that the, the sore is already deep and it's already a deep wound. And it's like we take a knife and we stick it in that, that sore where it's already an open. And we just begin to just dig in and stick it in and just twist it, just twist it, and just twist it. And it's already hurt. But what we just hurt, the more we can just twist it and hurt it even the more. We show no signs of caring. No signs of loving. No signs of whether or not I care anything about you. I show you no love. I care nothing about trying to bring any comfort to your pain. Oh, my God, hallelujah. We have no sympathy for what our loved ones are going through. No kind of mercy for them. But the word of God says that we must show sympathy and mercy and love to those. When they are burdened down and, and when they are going through trials and tribulations, he said, bear one another burden. And so you will fulfill the law of Christ. What do we think Christ does? Did not he bear all of our sickness? Did not he bear all of our pain on the cross for us? By his stripes we are healed. If he could take all that for us, what is our problem? We can't show a little bit of comfort to one another. No, what do we do? While others are already hurting, we choose to hurt them even the more. There's a songwriter who sat said, the only time that we should look down on a man or a woman is when we're reaching down to pick them up. We don't need to put our foot on their neck and stomp them down even the more when they're already down. And we can't lend them a helping hand. Don't jump on top of them and stomp down on them. Even the more. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse sixteen and seventeen, encourages us, especially in Christian families, how to console each other when we are in need of comfort. And it says, "Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us." and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Verse 17 says, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and word. Jesus Christ himself, he have already paid the price at Calvary. He have already purchased everlasting consolation and good hope through it. his own grace that he give unto us, that we have know how to comfort our own heart. And we have learned how to comfort ourselves so that when others need to be comforted, we know how it feels to be comforted. So when others are hurt, when others are broken, when others are wounded, we ought to know how to reach out and give hope, how to give good words, how to give comfort to those. Why? Because we know how it feels when Jesus reached out to us and show that love and give comfort unto us when it is needed. And Jesus has already established that for us. So if he did it for us, 
Why can't we who say that we are his representatives in the earth? Why can't we reach out and console others and give some comfort to mankind, especially those in our families? It's easy for us. It's a shame. It's easy for some of us to give comfort. Show hope and love to people who ain't even no kin to us. And our family members that need it the most, we'll walk right past we we'll like they're a stranger. And we'll show no hope. We will not extend the them hands. And we'll give them no love, no comfort whatsoever. And we got the nerve to call ourselves a child of God. No such thing. No such thing. We have already been spiritually conditioned to comfort one another through Jesus Christ and the power of his holy name. God expects us, family, to pray for one another. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. Now, he's not talking around about this, walking around and praying. Uh, every word come out your mouth is pray, 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 pray. You know what he's saying? Be consistent in your prayer. Families should always pray. Be effectual and fervent in your prayer every day for your family. Don't wait for them to go through something. See, you go ahead and build up prayer. Put your prayer in the bank. For your family member. So when your family member does come through an obstacle in their life, prayer is already in the base to draw up. But especially when you get a family member that is going through a trial or tribulation or a situation arise in their life, you can pray for them. Glory, hallelujah. That's why families need to pray together. Families need to pray together, not just in your individual home, but families need to have corporate family prayer. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? If you in a family, families need to have family prayer in your individual links in the family, but in your corporate family, families need to come together and have corporate Family prayer and cover the family in prayer because the enemy come but to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan is out to take out family people of God. You hear what I'm saying? He's out to take out the family of God. Family should always pray quiet because sincere prayer have is the anointing in Jesus' name and has power to break yokes. <clears throat> it has the power to put our enemies to flight. It has power to cover our wayward children. It has power to bring healing to the sick. And the prayer has power to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And family prayer has power over our broken families that can make them whole again. God expects families to love each other. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 tells us, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not God, loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. So, what is what, what is John saying to us tonight? He's saying, family, we're speaking specifically right now to family. 
And everybody is a family. No matter what that family consists of. Whether it's by DNA, or let me tell you, sometimes the family are people that you have connected yourself to who may have treated you even better than your born family. But whoever you classify your family to be, God is speaking specifically to families and not in the expectations that he has for family. Whatever that unit consists of for you that you call family. He say love one another. Whatever that love in your family looks like in 2021, increase that. Let that love magnify. Let that love increase in 2022. Why? Because love is a God. Love is not man. Man that knows how to love, that love comes from God. And he went on to say, everyone that love is born of God. If you're not really born of God, you really don't know how to love. Oh, there's a love that says, you do this for me, and I'll do that for you. There's a, a tit for tat love. That is not the kind of love that is born of God. The love that is born of God is an agape love. If you don't do anything for me, I love you enough to keep loving you in spite of. I do what I do because my love is born of God. My love is like the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross for us, not because we love him, but because he loved us. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We didn't even know him. He said, but while you was yet a sinner, I died for you. We didn't even know him. But he loved us enough that he died on the cross in our place. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world, not because we loved God, but because God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him, that believed in Jesus Christ, should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through his son Jesus, might be saved. So even from the beginning of time, when God created the first family of Adam and Eve, it was out of love because he created Adam and Eve a perfect family. But it was nothing that God did that was wrong that caused the first family to become imperfect. They became imperfect because of their disobedience. Because man wanted to do their own thing. Man wanted to follow their own agenda. It was out of their own act of disobedience that caused the downfall of the family. And the family continues to downfall. It continues to fall down. But God in his infinite wisdom and his love for family, he continues to love us. After he sent Jesus' love into this world, he established the order of expectations for his family. Through his son, Jesus Christ, he said, love one another. Jesus is love. He sent love into the world. That's why he can expect us as Santa to love one another. Why? Because we are born of love, his son, Jesus Christ. He said, and everyone that loves is born of God. And we know him. And we are actually born of love. We are born of God. And we know God. He that loves not, know not God. So if we don't love Jesus Christ, and we don't love our family. We do not love God. Neither do we know God. Why? Because God is love. And Jesus said, God said, don't tell me that you love me. And you don't love your own family. If you can't show love to your own family, you sure not showing no love unto me. Because you see your family... Even if you don't see them every day. Some of them you may see every day. Many of them you don't see for, for certain periods of time. He said, but when you do see them, 
show them love. Because you cannot legitimately say that you love God and don't love your family members. So God's expectations for family is that we love one another, that we are patient with one another, that we show comfort to one another, that we tell the truth to one another, that we suffer long for one another, and that we be real for one another. Because God is love. We want to thank God tonight for this word. We want to thank God for every one of you who have listened in on tonight. We pray that somebody's heart has been changed because you listen at this word, and we pray that when you think about this word, we pray that somebody's life will be transformed. We want to thank Jerry Ross Live worldwide. We want to thank Positive Power 21.org. Also, we want you to stay on the line. We want to follow in Transforming Lives, Bible Radio. You'll be hearing from Paul Bree Owens on Thy Testimony. And following Paul, you'll be hearing from none other than Veronica Brown on Pearl with Veronica. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Remember to love your family first because you can't love God. Unless you first love your family. This is Dr. B. Know that we love you, but God loves you best. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you on next Tuesday evening, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show. With Dr. V of Florence, South Carolina, and the Divine Church of Deliverance. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Positive Power, with Double Side Christian Media, and Spreaker Podcast. You're listening to George